Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. If you found us for the first time, then you are very welcome. On this channel, we discuss the impending energy revolution making its way across Australia and the rest of the world. Here we talk about electric cars, solar panels and home batteries. If you haven't done so already, please take a moment to hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. Well, given today is the last day of July, I wanted to give you an idea of how my Powerwall 2 has performed over the coldest month of the year in Sydney. First up, a few facts about me. I live in Sydney in a house with four people, including two children under the age of 10. We live in a double storey house with five bedrooms. I have a three kilowatt solar array and of course a Powerwall 2 with 13.5 kilowatt hour capacity. A few notable mentions about July at my place. I run the pool pump four hours a day, every alternate day, just so the pool doesn't go green. Over July, I run the heaters overnight, depending on how cold it gets. And as I said, July is the coldest month in Sydney. The average temperatures in July range from 8.1 degrees to 16.4 degrees Celsius. Of course, these are averages, so the temperatures can certainly drop lower than that on a few occasions. We average about six and a half hours of sunshine per day. And here are the stats. I've got three pictures up here for you to see. The first one is an overall snapshot for the month of July. The second one is the final week of July where it got a bit warmer. And the third picture is the year of 2018 thus far. The percentages represent how much my household has been self-powered, meaning how much of our electricity has come from either solar power or from the Powerwall 2. Yellow, of course, means solar, while the green represents a Powerwall 2 usage. Now, just a quick note, the green part representing the Powerwall 2 has been charged either from the sun or from off-peak electricity. There's no way at present with the Tesla app to know what the breakdown is between the two sources. Hopefully, Tesla will provide this metric in the future. I charge from off-peak, especially on cloudy days, because I know from experience that in July, or winter in general, I sometimes need to charge my Powerwall 2 from the grid overnight at off-peak rates. Otherwise, I'm going to start using the grid during the evening, during peak hours when electricity gets expensive. The Tesla app over its last few updates now has an advanced mode, which will intuitively do that for you automatically overnight, which has been quite handy. So as you can see, overall in July, I've been self-powered for 46% of the time, half of which is purely from solar power. The final week in July was quite warm, where some days reached over 20 degrees Celsius with bright sunny days. There you can see I've been self-powered for 59% of the time. I can anecdotally say that a lot of that green is actually charged from the sun because I haven't been charging from the grid much because it's been so sunny during the day. And finally, so far in 2018, 63% of the time my household has been self-powered. That figure should improve as the year goes on now that our days are getting longer and the weather is warming up as we slowly escape the clutches of winter here in Sydney. Alright guys, well thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that little snapshot of my Powerwall 2's performance in July, our coldest month in Sydney. I'll give a monthly summary as the year progresses, so you can get an idea of how the Powerwall 2 performs at different times of the year. Well, hopefully it's a lovely day wherever you are in this world, and as always, happy charging. Thanks for watching, and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to keep up to date with our latest videos. If you're about to buy a Tesla, use our promo code on screen to score free unlimited supercharging. Happy charging!